So first, let me start with an explanation. The purpose of this video is not to try and pin blame on anyone. We are all to blame. Every single one of us. Tuesday night showed not an issue with our political system or with either of our political parties. It showed an issue with us, as a people. I'm also not making this video because I feel that my words are any more valuable or important than anyone else's. In fact, due to a lot of the things discussed, my views as a straight white male are undeniably less important. I'm doing this so that I know when I look back at this time, I know that I wasn't silent. Now is not a time to be silent. Donald Trump is the next president of the United States. This is a fact. There is nothing that can realistically change this, short of apocalypse, and no one wants apocalypse. When Donald Trump's victory was announced, I cried. A lot of people did. Not because he's that bad, but because of what his victory represented. That, as much as we like to talk about equality and freedom making America great, those ideals are under fire every day. Donald Trump is a man who has gone on record as saying that he doesn't want African Americans counting his money, that the only people doing that should be short people in yarmulkes. He said that the majority of Mexicans are criminals and more specifically rapists and that we should ban people entering this country based on their religious faith. And he has bragged and laughed about being able to assault women because he's a celebrity. And people agreed with him. That's what's scary. He's not scary. He's a narcissistic bully, and anyone who survived high school knows how to deal with those. In fact, if we continue to get the man he's been post-election, we're going to be okay. His supporters, on the other hand, with their willful ignorance to his repeated racism and misogyny, they scare me. I don't think they're all racists or misogynists or anything like that. We all know and love people who voted for Trump. They are our cousins, our siblings, our aunts and uncles, our grandparents, even our parents. We love them and we know firsthand that they aren't full of hate. To generalize Trump supporters that way would be hypocritical and as ignorant as ignoring the hate speech from our president-elect. I've heard arguments about wanting to keep more of your money and his tax plan helping to accomplish that. And that's fair. I can understand where you're coming from. But the idea that that could or would be your primary focus and that you could prioritize your own financial gain over the rights and honestly well-being of other human beings sickens me. I have heard arguments about our governmental system being broken and I agree we need more than two realistic parties but the solution should be to fix the system not burn it down with us trapped inside. The arguments in favor of Trump the ones not fueled by hate are understandable but they're not enough. They don't make up for the women and minorities who will be discriminated against and attacked because of this. The targets of Trump's verbal abuse are people too. They are siblings and cousins and aunts and uncles and grandparents and parents. They might not be your relatives, but they're relatives of someone. Think about how you would feel if the people you cared about more than anyone else were treated this way. Now, you might not have seen the hate speech or you might have laughed it off as a bad joke, or just chalked it up to political rhetoric. But other people heard it, agreed with it, and took it to heart. Campuses have been covered in what can only be described as white supremacist propaganda. People have already been assaulted. Women have already been groped with a laugh and a, we can do this now. And that's not acceptable. Our society should not say that that is okay. If you think the anger and frustration here is about a certain candidate winning or losing, you've missed the point. Please remember that we're talking about other human beings here. That's what we need to focus on here. Not the president-elect, not the people who voted for him, but on the people affected by it. We have to stand together and make sure that this sort of injustice and hatred isn't what this country is known for. 
Now, I'm sure that the media will try and spin every little thing that Trump does in a negative light, but I, for one, am willing to give him the benefit of the doubt and an open mind from here on out, because he is the president now, and that title carries a certain level of respect. America should be a country based on equality, tolerance, and above all, freedom. That's the America that I want for myself and for the next generation. And I intend to do everything I can to make it a reality.